Take it away, Bonte. All right, Steph. Eat, learn, play. Eat, learn, play. Saw his charitable event. Uh, the golfers out there, the youngsters and everything like that. So that was cool. Steph Curry doing it all for the kids. Um, we're going to talk to George Conto about the San Francisco Giants who just lost back-to-back home series. Disco Fani, not good yesterday. Alex Wood on the IL, not good. Um, Logan Webb, tough luck loss Friday night, not good. Casey Schmidt struggling, not good. What's going on? Oh, Michael Conforto, hurt, heel injury, not good. Where are the Giants at right now? 29 and 30. Are they at where you thought they'd be? Are you having fun watching them? What needs to happen? Should Farhan Zaidi be aggressive? I wonder, Shasky, because a lot of talk was about him being aggressive, but let's get Contos on here. Um, George Contos, of course, does a hell of a job at NBC Sports Bay Area. I love running into him down there. His golf game is immaculate from what I'm hearing. He's driving the ball 500 yards. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, World Series shot with the Giants back in 2012 and 2014. And, you know, Contos, I remember talking before the season. George, good morning. Uh, we were talking before the season about the pitching and the depth of the pitching. Right now, that depth is taking a big-time hit with Alex Wood going on the injury list. Di Scafani scuffling yesterday. Where are you at with the pitching right now as the Giants head into Colorado for a big series uh, against the Rockies? Well, first of all, good morning, guys. And uh, I'll tell you what, whenever you're scuffling with your pitching staff, that is not the place that you want to go to try to figure it out. Um, and, you know, it's, it's interesting. We went into spring training being very, very um, – you know, positive and, and confident in what our rotation was going to look like. We had a bunch of options, and, you know, with Ross Stripling struggles and now him on the I.L. and then Alex Wood back on the I.L., um, Manaya having to kind of figure a few things out, uh, it's definitely a little bit concerning because what's going to end up happening is you're going to have your bullpen picking up the slack on that, and the bullpen's done such a great job. But if you wear the bullpen out early, those dog days in August and September when you're hopefully trying to grind for a playoff spot, that's going to come and it's going to pay. Uh, it's going to take its toll and pay its dues then. I mean, do you think that they have uh, they have to look outside the organization to find some some more pitching? Because I mean, I'm, I'm looking at some of the in-house candidates and Shrevelin and Manaya, and I mean, it's just eh, you know. And I know they want to bring up Harrison at some point, but it's a lot of pressure for the young man who hasn't been extended that deep into into a season like they're expecting him to be at some point this year. Do you go from internal or do you look outside the organization? Well, I think you always want to keep what you have intact first and foremost, right? So if if Ross Stripling comes back, you hopefully he gets healthy. Um, he's able to come back and figure it out. Sean Manaya has looked promising. He looks a lot better than he did early. Um, Kyle Harrison, I know all of the fans and everybody wants him to be the third, the third member of the prospect group to come up and make an immediate impact. He hasn't thrown more than four innings in AAA, and he's walking almost a guy an inning. And I know that there's a ton, a ton of energy around him. I'm just not sure that you're ready to bring him up right now and get his clock going. And the last thing that you would want to do is bring him up, not being extended, have him struggle, and ruin some of his confidence because that is going to be very detrimental in the long term. He's going to be a star. We know the stuff's there. We know the mental makeup's there. Um, I would try to keep it internal. you you got a guy in Jacob Junis who can start in the bullpen. Um, I mean, the guys, the guys at the top have been very, very good. Other than you know, Di Sclafani kind of being a little bit hit and miss. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on that one on on Harrison because Bonten had been kind of kicking that around. Um, the one guy who really feels like he's in the zone right now, Camilo Duvall. I mean, he had that bat against Rushley, uh, however you pronounce his name. I always mispronounce it. Uh, and, and he was up four nothing uh, in the ninth inning. It's it's non non safe situation. I mean. Rushlin is is literally choking up at the bat, just praying to hit something foul. He looks so dominant with the cutter sinker. I don't even know which one's which at 100 miles per hour with that slider. I mean, if he gets that high velocity command, he feels unhittable right now. For Camilo Duvall, for me, it's always going to be his fastball command because he's one of those guys that prefers, and at least in my opinion, I have not spoken to him about this, but from what I've watched, He's a lot more comfortable throwing that slider. And it's devastating when you have 100 miles an hour plus yep. under the hood. And you have to respect that when you stand in the box as a hitter. So when you're fouling off 100, you're fouling off 102, you swing and miss at 102, then he throws a 91-mile-an-hour slider, you get 
swings and at bats like Rushman looked like the other day. When he pitches with confidence, being the NL reliever of the month, he tied the most saves in a month in Giants history. Um, if he could just tighten up his fastball command a little bit, and it's not bad, but when he just when he falls behind in counts, sometimes I I see him having a lot more confidence in challenging with that slider mm-hmm. as opposed to challenging with that yep. fastball. And I'd like it to be a little bit the opposite if we're nitpicking for perfection. But the guy's been dominant. Yeah, no doubt. George Consul's here. On the morning, Russell, 95 95.7 game does a hell of a job on Giants pre and post game live on NBC. Of course, won a couple World Series with the Giants back in 12 and 14. Um, let's talk about the youngsters for a second, Casey Schmidt and Patrick Bailey. I've been very impressed with Patrick Bailey behind the plate, uh, handling the pitching staff. His bat has been surprising, has some sneaky speed. But Casey Schmidt, Chaskin and I were having a dialogue earlier today about Casey Schmidt. In the last two weeks, hasn't gotten his way at the plate. Should we be concerned about his bat? What adjustments does he need to make moving forward here? Is he batting just two thirty five over the last two weeks? Yeah, I mean, you, you saw you saw Casey Schmidt come up first, and then Patrick Bailey, and they both came up with such excitement. I mean, he was tearing the cover off the ball. He was just hitting everything, home runs, exhibiting really good plate uh, control, hitting fastballs in the other way, keeping his hands inside to outside, um, and they were a huge driving force in that last two weeks of May and the record that they have and the success that they had. But to, to your point, they've, they've cooled off. I'll start with Patrick Bailey. He's come up and looks like a big league veteran handling the staff. Absolutely. He's cool, calm, and collected back there. I heard Buster Posey give an interview on, on KNBR just saying that he has that, that maturity from a young player and that, that confidence that you like to see that not many guys have. So on the catching front, I love the way he frames the ball. He starts with the glove down, and then he brings pitches up which is the best way to steal strikes on either fastballs or breaking balls. If you can have your arm momentum going up as opposed to going down and then trying to bring it up, that's when umpires kind of see that and they don't give you those calls. But at the plate, you knew they were going to cool off a little bit, and that was going to be the biggest adjustment that they were going to have to make is when the league sees them a little bit. Now going to Casey Schmidt, he has the highest chase rate in the big leagues. He's swinging at over 50% of pitches that are out of the zone. That is incredibly too high, and that's going to be his main adjustment that he'll have to make is zone and plate discipline. He's so excited up there. He's still feeling great. He's seeing it like a like a water balloon, and he wants to be aggressive, and he wants to hit, which is great, but you really have to swing at good pitches. Patrick Bailey, I'm not really worried about as much. He's exhibited some really good plate discipline from both sides. I think he'll be just fine with the bat handling itself. Casey Schmidt has got to just clean it up and swing at better pitches, in my opinion. I would agree overall, but don't you think we've gotten a little overboard? I mean, this guy's a rookie. I mean, he's his first four weeks in the bigs, and I don't feel like he's getting overmatched the way Joey Bart got overmatched early on. And I'm seeing the guy, yes, he swings a lot. I, I don't dismiss that. But, like, we're acting like he's getting overpowered and he's batting in the 100s. I I don't know. I just I feel like we're just always looking for, not you, but I'm just saying people in general are always looking for flaws. And hitting with two strikes is an art. Plate discipline, some guys develop it at later points in their careers. Like, I, yes, I want him to be slightly more discerning, but I also want him to be aggressive and swing at those first pitch strikes. And I, I, I don't know. I just I feel like we're trying to poke holes in the young man's game right now. I mean, look, if you want this guy to be around for a long time, you have to identify what the flaws are. And there's no mm. doubt he's not going to be overmatched. He can hit high velocity. Yes. He can hit bad yeah. breaking balls. But what I've seen is he he's up there looking to swing and being overly aggressive right now. And to your point, he's been up for like, what, three and a half, three weeks, three yeah, and a half weeks, right. whatever yep. it was. I mean, the, the league is going to get to know you at some point. Mm-hmm. And the making of a good player, at least from my viewpoint, is how they adjust when the league starts seeing them and they make adjustments on them because they're going to struggle and how you bounce back from that struggle. Joey Barr, I think is a little bit of a different story in that he had so much pressure on him following Buster Posey at the big league level that I think Joey's might've been initially a little bit mental and that kind of took a little longer for him to get comfortable. Casey Schmidt came up and he looked like he felt real comfortable right from the beginning, which is great to see, but you always like to see how guys bounce back from their struggles. And I'm not saying he's struggling yet, but he's trending down pretty quickly in the batting average department. George Consult's here on the morning roast. Before we get you out of here, uh, we lost home baby yesterday, Roger Craig, at the age of 93, a four-time World Series champ. Of course, for Shasky and I, that was our first manager as Giants fans. 
you know, seven years old and in 89 when the Giants went to the World Series against the Oakland A's. Did you ever get to meet Hum Baby? Any stories? Uh, did you ever shake his hand? What you know about Roger Craig, who just left us yesterday? I did. I did. I got, I got to meet him a few times over my 11-year uh, kind of tenure now with the Giants. And uh, the thing that kind of sticks out the most outside of him uh, coming in in 85, I believe, after right. a 100 loss season, the only 100 loss season, I think, in Giants history in the San Francisco era, and then came back and won 83 games the next year. Uh, but last year when Will Clark got his uh, re- number retired during the, uh, during the ceremony, um, baby uh, put a little video together on the big screen, mm-hmm. and, and he said, you know what, congratulations, but if you'd have listened to me, you'd have been even better. <laughs> and you can see what kind of guy he was, and he liked to poke fun, but there was a little bit of seriousness in, in that comment. So um, I got him, obviously, when he was a little bit older, and uh, the Giants family definitely lost a great one yesterday. No doubt about that. Yeah, they did. They did. What, uh, what, what are you feeling right now with the Giants overall, right? Don't you feel optimistic about them? We were kicking this around. I'm just curious. Yeah. This has been more fun than I anticipated this year. Uh, I am optimist. I am optimistic based on how they've played since the middle of May. Um, but I think we could probably all agree that right there in the middle of May, they were firing on all cylinders yep. with all aspects of the game. Starting pitching did well. The bullpen has been absolutely dominant, and you guys have heard me say it for years. The team is only going to go as far as that pitching staff. Mm-hmm. Bullpen, uh, especially late in those games, so getting the ball to Camilo. Um, I think that this month is going to be very telling. you got you got some games yep. at Dodger Stadium, yep. then you come right back home to face the Padres and the D-backs, mm-hmm. and you can really make a huge dent, good or bad, in your season with that homestand. But you got Toronto, Baltimore just came in, and I think we saw what a dominant bullpen yep. looked like. You got the Mets. This is going to be a really crucial month, and I think it will be very telling as to what the Giants will do at the trade deadline, which is still August 1st. is a, a mile away, but you can make really big strides in either direction based on the performance of this month. You know, George, I'm with you. Nine of the next 12 on the road at Coors Field. You know how tough it is to play there at Coors Field. Wacky things happen in that big ballpark. At St. Louis, the Cardinals are starting to play a little bit better. You know, they're going to be up for the Giants. And then, of course, you mentioned Dodgers, Padres, Diamondbacks, Blue Jays north of the border, and then the New York Mets out in New York City. And, oh, by the way, you come back home for the July weekend and play the Mariners. So we're going to know a lot about this team over the next month. And we'll continue to watch you, man. How, how's the golf game going these days? I heard heard you was out there with Willie, man, just tearing it up in the city recently. <laughs> yeah, we uh we what we played a couple times. We we played out at Round Hill, and then uh, we went out to Cow Club, uh, played oh. played some golf. And oh man, I'll tell you what, golf game's pretty good. I'm sitting kind of around a plus point five, so Ooh. I'm a little dangerous right now. Yeah, well, hey, you do not take my buddy, George. <laughs> you want to take Shasky, buddy? Be my guest. No, I'll take, the, you know I'll take those uh, handful of strokes on either side. That's no problem. That's an equalizer. I love getting strokes. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, real quick. I got to leave you. I'm always the candy man on the golf course. No. <laughs> I, I got to link you up with my boys in 1985 Gallery uh, with the shoe game, man, because I see your shoe game, but they've laced me up with some new Jays. We got to share some stories there, but 1985 Gallery, I got to put you on to them, George, because they'll take care of you, man. They'll have you looking real nice. I would love that. I would love that. I got some I got some new drip for you. I got them Travis Scott's, Mocha's, and the Olives. I'm not sure if you've seen them, but no, I got them just for you, baby. No, I know. You were telling me about them. I didn't really want to see them because you made me jealous when you Travis told me you were getting Scott, them. And, Mocha, yeah, man, I know. They, it's, George is on another level, man. You're doing such a great job with Laura Britt and Carlos, of course, out there at NBC Sports Bay Area. We really enjoy your coverage oh. and your insight. And, yeah, you like those, Chasky? Those aren't bad. Those, are, those aren't bad. They're nasty. They're those nasty. Bad. They are nasty. They are nasty. George, good stuff, man. Appreciate the time today, brother. Thanks for having me, guys. Look forward to talking to you soon. Anytime, anytime. George Consoles here on the Roast. Man, he's a really good dude, man. He's a lot of fun. Remember he told he came into the set in NBC Sports.